Hi, I'm Heather from That Bread Lady. Today I am showing you how to make my homemade flaky pie crust. Make sure you go to thatbreadlady.com for the full recipe, but for right now, I'm just gonna show you how I put my ingredients together. I'm gonna show you just how to get the perfect texture for your pie crust dough, and I'm also gonna show you how to roll it out and get it in your pie pan so it rolls up nice and pretty and we get it in there without any disasters. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started and I have just a few things that I wanna point out to you, something that's really important about pie crust. When we're working with pie crust dough, we wanna use really cold ingredients. So if you're using butter and shortening, you wanna make sure that those are cold when you're adding them into your mixture. I like to put my butter in the freezer for about an hour or two before I use it. I also keep my shortening in the refrigerator for about an hour before I add it to my dough. Um, I'm also gonna be using ice water and I have just filled up a bowl with um, some ice water here and I'm gonna be using that to add to my dough. The reason why you want to use cold ingredients for pie crust is because it's gonna prevent those fats from melting when you're doing the mix, when you're doing all the mixing, when you're handling the dough. And the reason you don't want those to melt is because when we can keep those fats in little bits and pieces, when it bakes up in the oven, it's going to release air and it's going to make your pie crust a lot flakier. So make sure that you are using cold ingredients for your pie crust. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So in this bowl, I already have my flour and my salt mixed together, and I just tossed those around um, so that they're gonna get nice and, and incorporated when I add my butter and my shortening. And as you can see, I have my butter all cubed up, and it is nice and cold. And I've got my shortening over here as well. So there's a lot of different pie crust recipes out there. Some of them use all butter, some of them use all shortening, and some of them use half and half. I like to use half and half because shortening has a higher melting point. So when we're adding a little bit of shortening into the pie crust dough, it's going to make your pie crust more um, capable of shaping, keeping its shape in the oven. It's gonna be a lot easier to work with and it's going to stay beautiful as it bakes in the oven. Um, I, I don't wanna use all shortening because I love the flavor that butter adds. So that's why I like to do half and half. Um, at this point, I like to cut my butter and my shortening into my flour mixture. And this is called um, a pastry blender or a pastry cutter. This is super great for mixing butters into flours or shortening. And as you can see, it just kind of cuts it into the flour. If you have a, um, a food processor, you could definitely do this, this step in the food processor. Um, what we're looking for right now is we're looking to get all those pieces of butter and shortening coated with the flour and we're gonna break it up into smaller pieces so that we're gonna get those, those little uh, coarse crumbs of butter and shortening in our flour. They're gonna be, a lot of times you hear people say they need to be pea-sized, so you don't want super big chunks, but it's okay if you have a few big chunks of, of, flour, of shortening or butter in there, that's okay. So you're just gonna kind of work that butter and shortening into your flour and you might have to stop every once in a while and just clean that off. And I'm starting to get close here. Once I feel like I have all the big chunks broken up and I have all those pieces of shortening and butter coated in flour, um, then I'm gonna be adding my ice water. And I think I'm just about there. So, let me show you what this looks like if you can't see it from there. So as you can see, it's a coarse crumb texture. And I'm going to grab my measuring cup. Now this is a half a cup, 
and this is approximately how much water I'm going to be adding total. I'm going to dip this into my ice water and I'm just going to drizzle maybe a tablespoon or two at a time over my, over my mixture here. And with my spatula, I'm just going to kind of fold it, fold it over and try and incorporate the water. And I'm going to keep doing that gradually until I get it to the right consistency. So this is where it gets really tricky. Well, what is the right consistency for your pie crust? So we want to make sure that all of the, the flour is, is absorbed into that water. Um, a, a pie crust that, ha that doesn't have enough water added to it, it's going to be really hard to roll out. It's going to crack. It's going to flake. It's not going to hold its shape when you're rolling it out. Um, also, a pie crust that has too much water, you're going to have to add flour to that, and that is going to make your pie crust a little tough. So you want to just get it to the point to where all that flour is soaked up, and you could easily press it into a disc with your fingers without it being a total mess. I get all the water incorporated pretty much into the bowl. When I'm, when I'm super close, then I'll turn it out onto the countertop and I'll, I'll finish it up, uh, mixing it by hand and get all that flour. And then that way I can feel the dough and see what it feels like. Um, so I've had to add a little bit more water and everybody's gonna kind of be different at that at that point. Um, just I just use a half a cup as kind of a guide of how much water I need to add. And now you can see it's starting to it's starting to ball up. It's starting to to take like one big shape all together. I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Stir it up. Okay, so I've got a big, a lot of big clumps here. So I'm gonna turn this out onto my countertop and I'm gonna continue to mix it by hand. I'm gonna try my hardest to, to handle it as little as possible because again, we don't wanna melt those fats that we added we want them to stay nice and cold in the dough. And so at this point, I'll just kind of press it together and see if it all stays in one big ball, which you can see I have all of this flour right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip my hands in the ice water. So I'm gonna get my hands wet and press it around the dough. And then I'm gonna continue to kind of fold that, all that remaining flour into my dough. Like I don't want it to be flaky. I don't want it to feel dry. I want it to feel just moist enough to hold its shape. Okay, just about there. Okay, so now you can see I've got a nice, I've got a nice um, ball, of, ball of dough here. It's all sticking together, it's holding its shape, it's not releasing a bunch of flour everywhere. So at this point, I'm gonna cut it in half. This, this recipe makes two pie crusts. So go ahead and cut them into, into halves. Press them into a circle and into kind of a disc shape. And then you're gonna wrap these up in saran wrap and let them chill in the refrigerator for at least two hours before you roll it out. We're gonna return it to the refrigerator because we need, again, we need it to stay cold. Um, we need the, the butter and the shortening to stay cold in there. 
and when you roll it out cold, it's a lot easier to handle as well. So I'm going to just wrap those up in plastic wrap. And then I have some dough that's been chilling. I'm going to show you how I roll that out into my pie crust. Let me put these in the refrigerator. And voila, I have one that's already been chilling. Let me clear my space off here. Now, when you're rolling out your pie crust, you want to make sure that you have your filling ready to put, it, to put in it and that you have your oven preheated. You want to bake your pie crust when it's still cold. You don't want to handle it a bunch. You don't want it to come to room temperature while you're doing other things to get ready for your pie. You want to wait until the very last second to roll this out. That's going to that's gonna keep those those butters and shortening pockets um, for melting. And again, it's gonna create that flakiness for our dough. So you can see that I floured my, I floured my countertop. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on top of the pie crust. And then I'm gonna just start rolling it out. And I'm gonna work from the center and go out. And do you see I have like all this marbleization, is that a word, marbleization? <laughs> Marbling. I have like butter and shortening swirls. That is good. Um, don't get worried if you see that that's good because that means that when you mixed up your dough, you kept it nice and cold and you're gonna have a really good flaky dough. So again, keep your, your surface floured try really hard not to use too much flour because that, again, that's gonna make your dough a little tougher. Now, roll it out a little bit and then do a quarter turn and then continue rolling it out. And we're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna keep rolling it out and turning it until we get it rolled out to the size we want to. I'm, uh, the usual, pie pan is about nine inches. So I'm gonna roll it out a couple more inches from that to give it room to hang over the pie pan so that we can make our nice pretty crust. Just keep rolling it out. And at this point, if you have edges that are cracking, that aren't holding shape, then your pie crust is too wet. Um, if you run into that problem, go ahead and get a bowl of ice water and dip your fingers in it and kind of work it into your pie crust. Try and add some moisture back into it and see if that helps. I've done that plenty of times, trust me. <laughs> pie crusts are very temperamental, but once you get the right technique down once you um, figure out just that right consistency that you need your dough it really comes together nicely and works well just takes some practice just like everything in the kitchen right it takes a little bit of practice all right so i've got my um, glass pie pan already here I, I like to use glass pie pans because I can see the crust on the bottom when it's baking. I can see that when it's done, it'll be nice and golden. And it circulates air a lot better, um, I think, whenever I use um, glass pie pans. So I have that handy. And I'm gonna show you a trick. Let's see if I can do it without messing up here um, to get your crust into your pie pan. So start, start at the edge with your rolling pin and you're gonna lift up the edge of your dough and gently roll your rolling pin with your dough across like that. And then you're gonna come back 
oh, my pipe hands all the way over here. You're gonna come back with your pipe hands. See, I just, I just dropped it over the top of my pipe hand, and I'm gonna gently unroll it across the top of my pipe hand. Oh my gosh, I did it! I did it without messing up. <laughs> Trust me, I mess up a lot of times. Okay, so just push that dough inside your tin. Make sure that there's no there's no air pockets, so you're gonna make sure that it's nice and pressed up against the sides of your pan. And I have a lot of extra dough that's hanging off the sides here. So I like to use scissors for this part. I think if you use a knife to cut the excess off around, it can get a little bit messy, but scissors are always cleaner and easier to use. So. I want about two inches hanging off the edge of my of my pan. So I'm just gonna go around and cut that excess off and try and make it so that it's a nice uh, uniform border around the pie pan. Now, at this point, you can do any kind of crust that you want. So you could do a fluted crust, you could do, you could do, um, get a fork and, and with the, the, the prongs, just do like a pinched crust around. Um, you could also use that extra dough that we made and use that for a lattice. I'm gonna show you how to do a fluted crust and maybe I'll show you how to do a little crimped. I think that basically it's self-explanatory, but so when we're doing a fluted crust, you're gonna use one finger and from you're gonna use one of your hands, just use your pointer finger, and then with your other hand, you're gonna squeeze, you're gonna squeeze the dough up around that finger. So do you see that? Let's see if I can get you guys to get a better view of this. So we're just pinching it along the edge of the pie pan. You see how that's going? It's very pretty. Um, you wanna make sure that you have a good border of dough though around your pie pan because if you don't have like say if you got your dough into your pan and your your dough is just like right at the edge grab some of your extra dough and just press it in so that you make can make sure that you have enough of that extra dough around the edge to make a design um, let me grab a fork and I'll show you another another this is probably the easiest border that you could do and you would need less dough around the edge for this. You would want it just right on the, on the rim of your pie pan. But you just go ahead and grab a fork and you're just gonna crimp it. You're gonna crimp those edges just like that. See, isn't that super easy? Can you see that? That's super easy. That's probably the easiest border that you could do. So, um, that is my homemade flaky pie crust. Um, remember, if you're gonna be using this for a shell, let's say you're gonna be doing a banana cream pie, which I'm gonna be baking for Thanksgiving, um, and you just wanna bake the, the um, pie shell, um, you would go ahead and grab your fork and just make some holes all around your pie, your pie crust on the bottom and on the sides. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna release some, some air, so it's gonna keep it from bubbling up when you bake it. Um, go ahead and do that and bake it for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it's golden. Um, and, and remember, go to my website, thatbreadlady.com, and I have a pie crust recipe on there, and I also have a recipe for my delicious um, apple crumble top pie, which is, super good and we've obviously already been enjoying it. 
So make sure you check that out and leave me any questions that you have in the comments here and I'll answer as many questions as I can. Hopefully I'll be able to help you make a successful pie. Thanks so much.